All right, thank you for the introduction. So my name is Jenny Kobesake. I'm um, the faculty librarian for, of science and engineering and also I lead the metrics and research impact university-wide at Curtin University. And so I'm going to talk to you today about breathing new life into a metrics and research impact service and trying to kind of balance that fine line between having limited staff and um, obviously big client expectations. So I'd just like to acknowledge the country of the traditional owners on the lands on which Curtin Perth is located, the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation. I pay my respects to their elders, past and present. I acknowledge all Indigenous people amongst us today, as well as the Indigenous peoples of the lands from which you come from. And I'd like to recognise that Indigenous peoples are the knowledge holders and the first researchers, teachers and learners of those lands. So why would you need to breathe new life into a metrics and research impact service? Well, it's actually for good reasons. It just so happens that simultaneously at the same time, the staff that have provided the highly valued niche service in our library all were successful in getting staff promotions in various locations and moved on. Now, this was during the COVID um, time period. So existing staff across our research services team became the caretakers of this service essentially. And um, it was kind of on hold unless a direct query came in. Um, and the faculty librarians, I guess, as frontline staff were sort of receiving a lot of those queries and needing to answer them. Now, um, early last year, um, the library management recognised there was really a need to reinstate this service and cover it, but it was going to need to be with existing staff. Um, so they took the opportunity to leverage faculty librarian expertise in networking and also in relationship building and also with consideration to building capacity across the team for future proofing, they decided that the faculty librarians would each take along a university-wide research service. There's publishing, systematic reviews and expert searching, metrics and research impact, and a researcher and research student engagement service. So how does a STEM librarian um, upskill and run a university-wide metrics and research impact service? Well, it's certainly going to be a time juggle. It felt um, at the beginning, um, four days a week. I have a very busy liaison role and a big faculty and a research service role university-wide was going to need to be integrated. But I really knew the value of the metrics and research impact services to the science and engineering researchers to start with from being closely integrated with the faculty for many years. So it followed, obviously, that it was going to be of equal value to the other disciplines. So first, I kind of had to look at the building blocks that I had to work with. So I guess the first one was what transferable skills did I have from, from the role that I was doing already? So liaison library, librarians actually have a substantial number of transferable skill sets. We've got our networking skills, communication skills, we're really attuned to clients' needs, good at reading the room and talking the talk. We have a library language you'll all be aware of when you talk to clients that you need to think about. Um, when you go out into a faculty and you're integrated there, there's a whole nother language going on um, that you need to belong and sound like you belong. So I knew that was going to be the case with this as well. And you also really appreciate when you specialise in particular disciplines that there are differences and nuances. So I knew they would apply to the other disciplines across the university as well. Um, now the next building block I needed to consider was skills and knowledge in metrics and research impact to actually be able to provide the service. I certainly had the base skill sets and a bit of extra from answering some complex queries during that caretaking period and been around researchers and research leadership and research office staff for many years. And I do actually have a scientific medical background, so I guess an analytical brain was very helpful as well for looking at data. Um, my faculty librarian colleagues um, specialising in other disciplines were really invaluable as well to share their specialist knowledge to understand what was going to be important in this space to those disciplines. Um, the next building block was the networks. So I needed to leverage the network I had and expand that into this area. So the key stakeholders are really the ones I needed to look at. So that was the research office and obviously the researchers in the faculties. I knew which positions in my faculty and areas needed to be connected with and I met with them and I asked to be introduced to um, the key connections in the other faculties by the faculty librarians. My line manager had a background in metrics and research impact and was able to connect me into the research office as well. So I got really busy with in-person meetings, coffee chats, phone calls, emails, all those sorts of things you need to do to build up a network. And then once I'd kind of confirmed through that networking who the main stakeholders were, I knew what they needed in this space and I really started to build the service around what they articulated that they needed. 
So in the research office, the engagement and impact people, the grants team, there's data analysts that do metrics and impact work at you know, a university-wide level. And there's, of course, in the faculties, the leadership um, key positions and individual researchers at all levels and had to quite quickly learn how to talk the talk, all the grants terminology and language and metrics and research and impact language. So it sounded like I knew what I was talking about while I was frantically upskilling in the background. Now, being actively connected with key stakeholders really allowed me to identify the strategic touch points and think about how it could be sustainable and what I offered. So a good example of that is the Category 1 grant application. So the Australian Research Council and for Health, the NHMRC, have these grant applications and obviously they need to be able to find traditional metrics and also alt metrics. Um, so delivering these workshops is going to be important. Now the grants team actually have a program of workshops here that they deliver. So I propose to them that I actually integrate those workshops into their program. And that was really um, quite a key thing because for this particular part of the service, it gives it point and need timing it gives it context and validity for the researchers. Um, it added value to their program because I filled a client need that was very niche that they couldn't address themselves. Um, it's really sustainable for me um, because the grants team do all the registrations and room bookings and catering and all that sort of organising and recordings and follow up. So that saved me a lot of time. And the grants team recognised after those first couple of workshops the value add there and invited me to their annual planning day and so we have integrated now workshops into their key grant application points throughout the year. Now, part of making sure this was manageable was actually um, developing what's called a service charter. So this lets clients know um, what's in scope, what's out of scope. Um, it's a really useful tool for me to be able to talk to if someone asks for something that's out of scope of the service, then I can say, look, that's out of scope for our service, but what I can do for you is this and this. Um, and it also outlines the services that are available to them and how to get in touch with us to make the most of those. So this was a really um, key thing to organise very early. Um, my line manager at the time was very good at helping me to outline and understand what was going to be important to include and not include in this um, to make sure it didn't mushroom outside of the capacity that was available. Now, out of scope, um, it was quite important to outline as well because there are some things that the people ask for which are actually addressed by other areas of the university. So, for example, at our university, institutional level analytics um, are done by data analysts in the research office. Um, so just really focusing on research groups and individuals. Um, publication listings can be done by the research office as well with our research management system elements. Um, another thing that was decided needed to be out of scope was individual reports. Um, because they're very time consuming um, without a lot of strategic impact necessarily and um, updating grant application statements as well is also very time consuming and these are skills that they can actually learn themselves. So instead we actually offer consultations. Now these consultations are um, sort of designed along the lines of, you know, if you give someone a fish, you feed them for a day, but um, if you teach them to fish, you feed them for a lifetime. So obviously, if they bring along their laptop, say for an in-person consultation, then um, actually get them to look up and use the databases and I talk them through it. And then what we can actually do is send them away with some skills. They can download the spreadsheets they need at that point in time as well during the consultation and also weave into their, um, as we're going through it, responsible use of those metrics and alt metrics and also how to sort of integrate that data into impact statements. And they get follow-up email, which has useful links, screenshots and things like that as well. Now, around the same time period that we were redeveloping this service, we, um, as a team, actually started using the Microsoft Booking System, which reads our Outlook calendars. Um, and this has actually um, been quite a useful tool as well. Uh, we also have um, consultations available for things like expert searching, copyright, systematic reviews, research data management, publishing and research writing. Uh, we actually have integrated into the time that's booked into our calendar, um, preparation time and follow-up time, um, and the client actually just gets the 45-minute appointment into their calendar. We have a booking form which asks them key questions that we need to know so that we can um, develop the consultation um, there appropriately. Um, you do have to have a very organised calendar for this, so you do need to block times, for example, if you're using these tools to get project work done and things like that. 
Um, but certainly um, the client feedback is very positive and they do seem to really like it. Now, I'm a really um, passionate person about excellence in service. I really believe that every opportunity counts and that certainly um, ripples through as you um, do well in one thing, it leads to another thing. And that's definitely the way I feel to build up um, a really good service. So for example, um, individual consultations, say for example, for our Space Science Technology Centre has led to analytical reporting for them. Um, same for doing an individual consultation for a director of research for one of the humanities schools for design a built environment. He then wanted some analytical reporting for research groups because they saw the value in what they were getting as an individual could be applied to their Reese wider research group or their school. And the same with the analytical reporting um, for that director of research humanities. Um, all three schools then asked for analytical reports. I attended their research committee meetings and gave presentations. And then subsequently we've done um, a workshop for the whole faculty. And now we've got some very niche project workshops that we're going to be doing for them following up from that. Um, individual consultations have also led to directly two workshops. My head of school for nursing um, came and saw us for an individual consult, and then we obviously did a workshop for her. Um, and workshops themselves, um, for example, the Future of Work Institute here at Curtin in the Business and Law Faculty um, led to individual consultations, and um, one of those led to someone um, winning the Curtin Researcher of the Year and now being a finalist in the West Australian Premier Awards. So these little things each day can actually really build up the service and lead to something bigger. Now, feedback, that old chestnut. So asking for feedback, of course, is you know a, a really positive and it's a really good thing to do. But I really decided that I wanted to actually improve and tailor, for example, the analytical reporting we were doing. I felt like I was still learning what needed to be in them. So I asked very specific questions. Um, when I asked for feedback, I actually asked, does this meet or match with the expectations that you had for the report? Um, is it missing any data or is there any visualisations you're expecting or that you need from this report? Um, just to see, you know, if I was hitting the mark and also to see, you know, what I could actually develop into them for the future. Now, for example, that Space Science Technology Centre reporting I did, one part of it was some insights reporting, we covered Web of Science research areas, FOR codes, SDGs and so on. Um, and they actually came back and said, oh, we, we believe we can actually analyse the topic space science somehow. And I thought, well, that's a citation topic. So I explained what that was and they asked to have some reporting on that. So I managed to get some um, reporting added to that particular report for them. And I've integrated that into future reports for other groups and they've really liked it. Um, now, and they actually use some of that data from that part of the report when um, they're giving presentations at international conferences because the data makes them look fantastic. So um, the other thing about, I guess, feedback is consultation. So it's great to actually clarify what the client needs at the beginning of the consultation to make sure you stay focused in on what they need and to check towards the end that you've definitely covered what they need. Um, and sending the follow-up email when you say you'll send it. So if I know in my day I don't have enough time to send a follow-up email that day, I'll let them know I will be getting in touch with you tomorrow. Okay, so just making sure that you can give them reasonable outcomes and expectations. Now, none of this... Um, occurs as an island, there's no I in team. So um, as the workload increased with this, um, the future proofing stage two part of the surface came about. So um, the plan was, and we are still um, integrating this, we are upskilling two of our wonderful research services librarians to do metrics and research impact queries and also the individual consultations. Now they're both part-time and they support other research service areas as well. So they're very busy people. Um, the idea eventually is that hopefully I can then focus more on the analytical reporting for research groups and the bespoke workshops with their support and also do special projects, for example, comparing Open Alex with subscription resources. That's one of the projects we're doing this year. Now, finding the time to train colleagues is a really big challenge when you're really crazy busy with a couple of roles going on, but it's certainly starting to pay off. Um, and the colleague that I began training first can now do consults expertly and are beginning to train a second colleague as well. Um, a really important aspect of this teamwork and building a little mini metrics team within the team 
is recognising the existing skill sets that these research services librarians bring to the metrics and impact service. Um, it's just as important as actually upskilling them in metrics and research impact. So one of the librarians actually has repository expertise. So we project we're undertaking with the humanities schools to increase the visibility and evidence of impact for their non-traditional research outputs means that her expertise in the repository is absolutely invaluable. And our other librarian has some fantastic static sites experience. And I'm going to share the service charter link um, after I finish the presentation. So have a look at that service charter, which he's put together. Um, we use static sites rather than libguides. So um, it's actually quite a skill set, um, you know, unique skill set to have, and you'll actually see um, you know, the work that's gone into that. So I guess breathing a new life into this service has been possible primarily um, due to the support of my line managers, but also um, the wider research services team's excellent reputation and their networks. So um, researchers that interact with my colleagues have the con confidence in the research team in the Curtin Library, which makes re-establishing the service so much easier. So a big shout out to the research services team at Curtin Library. Thank you very much. And um, that's my presentation finished.